welcome to The Positive Side. Ann DeSantis back again. And today's show is a, a real blessing to me personally because I have with me a long time and very close friend of mine that when we were younger and we were raising our children, uh, we spent a lot of time together. Mm -hmm. Her name is Leslie Cree and she is a certified lactation consultant from central Pennsylvania. So Leslie, welcome to Hi. the positive side. So Thank you for joining you. me. So good to see you. And I'm amazed at all that you've accomplished. Thank Can you. I say it's an honor to be with you right now. Thank you, Leslie. Loving it. It means so much to Ooh, me. I'm so friend, nervous. my so friend nervous. here. Yeah. So awesome. So now, um, I wanted to talk to you about uh, moms out there, families out there, because that's something that Leslie and I both experienced uh, way back in the mid-90s when we were having our first child, both in 1996. 1996. And we were amongst uh, a small group of, of women at the time, I think, um, right now in our culture, the whole green, natural movement, you know, living that sort of environmentally uh, aware life. Mm -hmm. uh, that would include breastfeeding, and that was something that we uh, decided to do. And um, we met at a, a breastfeeding group when our children were babies. I think Mad was probably three months old. I think Elaine was newborn. Yeah, yeah. it was a long time ago. It was and a long time ago. What a journey it was. Yeah. So Leslie um, was very inspired, decided to become a certified lactation consultant. Now, the title is actually she's a BA because her uh, degree was um, in journalism. Back in the day. Back in Temple the day. University. Temple yep. University, mm -hmm. Philadelphia area. Philadelphia. And then um, the International Board Certified Lactation Consultant is something that is a designation recognized as uh, excellence in care. So there's clinical education, counseling education, and we're kind of a catch-all. We can evaluate clinical situations, but we also provide that um, coaching, that transition to a new phase of life. Um, so it's, it's very rewarding. It's also you get to be a little bit detective and a whole lot cheerleader. It's wonderful. So that's a blessing to do this job. And it's, it, it's such a blessing to discuss this because, of course, my memory up here, I'm down in memory, up, going Mommy down memory brain. lane, uh, <laughs> when Leslie's second uh, child was born, Sam, I know that part of your inspiration for wanting to be a certified lactation consultant to help new moms with breastfeeding is the fact that your son did have, um, I think he was tongue-tied, I he believe? He was, and of course, 20 years ago, that really wasn't on anybody's radar. Um, mm -hmm. We were friends, we were anticipating our second children together, and it wasn't the sail through experience that it was with my daughter. And I think what I held on to when Sam and I were really working through things was how wonderful this relationship can be. And so I pursued, and at a certain point, my husband John said, you, you put so much into this and you share whatever you find, and maybe we ought to consider you funding you go back to school and redirect your career dream. So that's kind of how this got started. And it also put my heart in a new place. It's very easy to tell a new mom um, platitudes. Just keep trying, it'll come together, this day shall pass. When you're struggling every day, those don't really mean a lot. You want an action plan, you want somebody to listen to your concerns, you want to know you're on the right pathway. And so we consider it a blessing to be able to, to spend that time. I'm not the only lactation consultant that practices this way, probably for that reason, to make sure that mothers are heard. It's a very tough time in your life if you feel like you're not being heard. And that, that really galvanized my heart. I know. To be com a compassionate Since caregiver. You're yeah. Now for anybody out there who's watching and you're a healthcare provider, uh, I mean, I think one of the primary things that we all think of is that we want people who care. Mm -hmm. It means so much when you're dealing with someone who actually cares about what will happen to you with whatever that problem is. Yeah. And I know that you do. So whoever is watching out there and, and you know, watching this interview is that you have a person right here who so, yeah. uh, is, goes the extra mile. This is I know very, very relationship-based. Yes. And so you know, I do that. And I don't consider it an extra mile. I consider it just what I'm called what to you do. Should, yes. and, um, and I know there are a lot of IBCLCs and CLCs that feel the same way. This is mm. um, this isn't one of those things that you're going to say. I'm going to get rich at this. Yeah. That's not what this is about. It's mm. really about validating each mother where she is, and the goal isn't our goal to set; it's hers. 
Mm, and to wonderful. make sure that each person is comfortable with where she's at. And there's a lot of static out there right now with um, media and you mm. know the, the dear woman who got shamed for her pumping and then there's somebody else that got shamed for a formula. This is really just about helping each mother along on her journey. And so it doesn't look the same for every mother. That's the, the beauty of it. That's it's amazing. Yeah. So if somebody's out there watching, some of our viewers, now we're based here in, in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, but this is an internet show, so anybody can watch it anywhere. Sure. Um, and if a mother who is ex expectant, would you have any kind of words of advice? Because I know that you and I, we had discovered something together that back in, say, 1995 or 1996 that um, some people didn't know about. I mean, uh, as, far as, as far as even lactation and breastfeeding, yeah, we, we did kind of really ride a second wave mm -hmm. into um, that. And the messaging, even, you know, it gets through, breast is best and blah, blah, blah. But there's no real practical, how do I get to this? And um, meeting at Nursing Mothers was a great blessing. Truly, I wasn't even going to go that day. I have very serious postpartum anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. I don't know what made me leave the house that day. And then um, to sit in a group of people I didn't know, and you came up to me and said <laughs> that, I know, and I knew I'm going to embarrass you. <laughs> you said you're such a lovely attachment parent, and I didn't even know what that meant. Yeah. All I knew was I was in survival mode meeting my daughter's needs, and you gave me a construct for that and really kind of awakened me to other things. Um, I was in existence mode, but I, I was going with my heart. I had gotten advice. Some was applicable to me. Some made, made me feel hurt or inadequate and, mm -hmm. and you really just uplifted me where Thank I was you. at you know and that that's an important aspect Thank you so much. Uplifting each other. I, I have that memory. Mommy. I have that you memory. You probably remember it so much different. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I just remember so. being in a large room of, of a bunch of moms with little ones and and hearing Leslie speak uh, you know so articulately and I thought you know sometimes in your mind you think there's somebody I could be friends with yeah. And I just walked over and introduced myself. You brought so me out of my here shell. we are, so 23, you go, 23, 24 years later, we're, mm -hmm. we're back. So, so yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's, uh, it's been an amazing journey, and it's also something that continues. Um, so, well, you've continued yeah. to help people that were like us. Yeah, that's what she's done. Leslie has done. So, and they expanded that. Um, mm. you know, we did, like you said at the beginning of your introduction, gravitating toward things that were maybe more natural or green. Um, sometimes, you know, you're not sure how to, you want to do these things with your children. You want to start over and have organic foods or whatever, and how to get that started, um, finding that community to do so. Uh, community yeah. is so important. And, you know, she mentioned not only with breastfeeding, but the other thing was, and now, you know, the environment is so important today, but mm -hmm. we both cloth diapered, too. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't so bad. It wasn't no, so it really wasn't terrible. So yeah. I, I think our, our most uh, ardent critics were our own moms saying, we waited forever for Pampers. What are you doing? But yeah. um, it was something we felt very strongly about. That's right. And I think part of this loops around, too, is that um, mothers do feel strongly about how they want to be parenting their child. And there's a lot of advice out there that's really great, and there's some that really isn't. And you inspired me to just kind of say, hey, look at your situation. Look at your daughter. Is she thriving? Are you at peace with this? Then this is right for you. And that really, that gift does get paid forward every time. Thank I'm consulting, you, you know. Well, I yeah. can't give myself any credit, really, because Girl. I had, um, no, I, had be, I became aware of some organizations. One was a nursing mother's organization. So wherever you are, if you're a pregnant woman or uh, a person that has little kids at home and, and would like to get involved as yeah, these nursing groups, you know, breastfeeding groups. Um, one is an international group. It's called La Leche League. I don't know their website offhand, but Google it's that. www.lli.org. L okay, L that makes sense. lli.org. Um, you can also just put in um, for your own geography your search engine is already in your geography it will give you um, local groups that's so a great I think idea the groups are there but our society is so um, hurried and we have a lot mm. of social media now that we did not have the social media no we sometimes didn't sometimes you are <laughs> in your house but that that face-to-face -face, that contact makes 
a difference. It, it really does. does. Otherwise, it really does. it's worth putting yourself out there. Side. <laughs> exactly. It's worth putting yourself out there for, which is how I felt. I was. I'm like, oh, uh, this is going to be corny, and I'm not a joiner, and I don't know who these ladies are. Mm -hmm. And we found actually lifelong friendship. Yeah, that's and, right. And you just sometimes you do have to put yourself out there when you're the most vulnerable to find that that kernel. It makes so, a difference because yeah. as Leslie said, now when we had kids, you know, back in the mid '90s, I mean. I don't even think we had our first email address or whatever until, mm. you know, late 90s. So I think when I moved away, our kids were just about, you know, seven, eight. We were able to text each other on the flip phone. It was yeah, like a on the deal. flip phone. So, oh, goodness. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, but I yeah, did want to also put out an encouragement. Um, breastfeeding mother groups are not just for after you've had your baby. If you're mm. on maternity leave, you have a chance to investigate things while you are still expecting. Do Please investigate do. what's out there. It will help with goal setting to meet some folks that maybe are enacting what you're envisioning. And when your baby comes, he or she's gonna have their own opinion about it. It's nice to be able to weigh some of those options that you've seen happen. That's right. So, now I know one of the things yeah. that we learned and that you've learned is that who, and I know we know the answer to this question, but who knows your baby best? The doctor or you? I mean, right. yeah. This, you know, your baby's camped out under your heart for nine months. You, those kicks, those hiccups, those little rolls, you know, those responses when you talk, the baby That's flutters. right. Um, you know, uh, most moms really kind of go into this, it's very intimidating. If you just kind of get that first after delivery, you're skin to skin with your baby and you gaze into each other's eyes, you really do know this person. You really do. It's a confidence game. It is. Yeah. And what about for, now I know that we were discussing as well, the idea that we're in this culture, as I said, as we were talking about, everybody's so rushed. And even yeah. sometimes the, as a mom, I know that my intention when I had my daughters was, especially my first daughter, well, maybe only my first daughter, was that I wanted to go straight back to work after a certain amount of weeks. Sure. And sometimes, now I know that every situation is different and not everybody can stay home for a given amount of time, but I did make a decision that I wanted to stay home. And you know, I know that you had made that decision for a, a period of time as well, mm -hmm. we both did. And time goes by so quickly. Did you have any words on that? Uh, yeah, it was actually kind of interesting. Um, yes, I did intend to go back to work. Um, I was fortunate to have enough time in my job that I had the six week. Um, the paid leave was covered and then I could take another six, you know, vacation that I had saved. And I went in to see my boss and of course I brought my daughter to show off at the office. And she looked at me interacting with my daughter and she said, you know, do you really want to do this? I went home and talked to my husband and we, we did a lot of uh, soul searching, we did a lot of numbers crunching and we, you know, we really, we really don't want to do this. We decided, we made some financial decisions um, that we, I was able to stay home. That's awesome. And that was, a, that was in hindsight a blessing at the time. It was a very big adjustment. I'm sure. Yeah. Now we do have to take a break. Okay. We have so much more to talk about and stay tuned because we also have some pictures. So see you in a few. <laughs> Choosing Medicare coverage can be a very confusing and complicated process. Help is just a phone call away, 856-226-4800. As a licensed insurance agent, I'll assist you in making an informed and confident decision on a Medicare plan that meets your needs, lifestyle, and budget. Call me today for a free, no obligation, Medicare benefits consultation, 856-226-4800. When did you see the sign? When I needed to create a better visitor experience. Improve our workflow. Attract new customers. That's when FastSigns recommended fleet graphics. Yeah, now business is rolling in. Get started at FastSigns.com. What do I want to be when I grow up? Maybe a musician? A veterinarian? Maybe an equestrian? A mommy? Well, why not be all these things and more? Consider joining me, Dr. V, with friends and colleagues as we explore a wide range of topics 
together. V is for variety, here on RVN TV. There you go, Richard. Oh, is that too hard for you? No, is it too hard for you? Woo, we're playing catch now. <laughs> oh, shit. Should you choose Rowan College? Welcome back to The Positive Side and DeSantis. And as I mentioned before at the beginning of the show is that I'm joined by someone that I've known for years. She's a great friend of mine. Her name is Leslie Cree, mm -hmm. and she is a certified lactation consultant. So welcome back again. Thank you, dear. <laughs> and, um, now, Leslie and I, we shared a very special time in our lives when our children were little. We both have two kids that are pretty much the same age. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So we wound up involved in play groups and breastfeeding groups and just, you know, spending a lot of like mom and kid time together back in the mid and late 90s. And I know that we do have some graphics. So I wonder if we could take a look at <laughs> some of the graphics that we have. Okay, there we go. Leslie, oh. if you could describe that one. Sure, um, you're Sean. And in the blue, and my Sammy, they are about a month apart. And um, I think after I had Sam, the exhaustion, we would be at your house <laughs> or mine with coffee in hand, our toddlers playing, mm -hmm. and we napped them together. And I think we probably took a nap ourselves at that point. That's and right. That's a good friend that you can nap with. Oh, yeah. huh. so. There's another one. There's our older girls, um, Euralene um, with the bangs and my Maddie with her hair up and her teeth out. Adorable. So, yeah, and it, it's important for children too. And as they made the transition to siblinghood, we had that core. So we mm -hmm. had a chance to really. Hey. You know, <gasps> who are those pregnant That's ladies? right. There's, there's <laughs> Leslie and I. Leslie's, you can see, sort of in the middle there, and there I'm the one go. on the right. So we were about nine months pregnant, right? With number two. That, so that's your Sean and that's my Sammy in there. Yeah. So yeah, who decided to make a late appearance. <laughs> yeah. And there's so, Leslie. Nursing in public can be discreet and enjoyable. Um, if the shot that doesn't pan back is I was in the middle of a chili cook-off. People right. everywhere. Sure. So a lot of times that's a fear that moms have is, you know, what do I do when I go out? When, when What if my baby wants to feed? Um, that does a subtle picture of nursing in public and it's really there's a lot of portability with your baby and sometimes you're really worried about getting out there and breaking a seal first time you've nursed in public so That's you right. get comfortable and it's enjoyable memories oh so. i'm so glad you brought those photos Ooh. it's just it's, it's i it's thought it. you were going to make a face yeah. right there, there. <laughs> so, that was awesome true stories yeah. so. so new moms out there or people who are pregnant you know take a look at uh the two of us here who went through a journey and as I mentioned at the beginning of the first half of the show, um, we were pretty much, I would say, green, you know, naturally based mothers who decided to go kind of a different route back in the late 90s, mid 90s. Uh, we did, you know, breastfeeding, long-term breastfeeding mm -hmm. uh, with our, you know, our kids. And I don't think uh, we ever did any, <laughs> anything that was expected of us. That's we did right. the opposite. That's yeah. right. So, and we were into the whole nutrition. I know that we never really did too much with the jar, the baby food jars or anything no, like that. Yeah, probably hardly at all for mine because they really didn't particularly like food. So there you go. But yeah. um, now they're foodies. It just See? took a little longer. That's so, right. But I think um, we were able to encourage each other along. And that's an important aspect that a lot of moms, I don't think they get um, as much encouragement um, along the same timeline that we did. Um, a lot more people are back to work. Um, U.S. maternity leave policies are very inadequate. Mm. Um, and we had also mentioned for us taking a look at 
globally where we wanted to go and stepping back, finding maybe non-traditional ways to supplement the family budget so that we could be home with our children. I think that really made a big difference. And I mean, in the, those intervening years, you know, I made a whole career change. So um, sometimes it seems very daunting to change what you're doing, um, but it can be very rewarding. And so um, encouraging mothers along and saying, you know, if you have something you want to follow, let's find a way to make that happen. That's right, because Leslie and I even went on a journey with uh, homeschooling. Uh, I know you did it for 12 years, I think. Yeah, or no, uh, six years six homeschooling. Years? Okay. Yep, my kids' uh, middle years, we homeschooled. So, That's right, I remember um, that. Yeah, and I have to say, bra bragging rights. Um, my daughter is in graduate school in Boston for a Master's of Public Health. All right. My son is um, in one week will be a junior at West Virginia University. Um, so it works. It <laughs> and works. It's, we did put a lot of sacrifice, I want to say, mm -hmm. and, and for you as well. It is a lot of self-sacrifice to put your career maybe in pause mode, um, but now we've been blessed to be able to kind of reinvigorate, and, and it's very exciting, very exciting. I feel like our best career years are coming. So, That's right. Yeah. And, the, you know, the show is the positive side, and, and um, part of the positive side, as I said at the beginning of the show, is friendship. And I think another thing that, if you hear this between us, is trusting God because uh, who would have guessed, you know, that, as you said, different careers that come by. I was, I was home 20 years. I mean, I homeschooled my kids all the way through yes, you and, uh, you know, college now. So, uh, yeah, you know, and amazing young ladies, that's right. raised, Thank very you. accomplished, very poised and uh, being able to spend that time, I think, really does settle a child. Exactly. It Spending really time, so yeah. important. And it's so hard important. to do when you're a new mom and, you know, you, you're sort of in that crossroads. You're, you're excited to hold your baby and then you're thinking, why can't I ever put you down? Um, those are trying times, mm -hmm. reaching out um, to um, a group um, or even just that one particular friend. To, to help you through makes, uh, makes a difference to getting through the day. You're so right. Um, what I see on my job, I work in a hospital, so very young, of course, newborn, um, and outpatients that come in is that transition is so tumultuous for mothers. Mm -hmm. And um, so many times you think you're by yourself. Um, you're home, you maybe have never had that many weeks off from work before. And your friends are like, hey, makes how's your vacation? How are you doing? <laughs> and you're thinking, I haven't slept, I haven't showered, I haven't eaten. This is crazy. Um, there is a lot, of, um, a lot of times where someone will say, I wish I had called you sooner. Um, lactation help is um, something that, even if you think it's going great, take advantage. The, um, the analogy I use sometimes is, you know, if your car isn't working right, you're not going to drive it every day going, I hope that wheel doesn't fall off you'll call the mechanic, you'll get in there. Um, mothers, I think we feel very personal about being able to care for and feed our babies. Uh, we don't have really a lot of cultural precedent for this. Um, unfortunately, med schools and nursing schools don't have a lot of education. You don't get a lot in those quick hits. At your doctor's office, um, there is a, an entire team waiting to uplift you. And um, sometimes the people have a fear of being judged for a choice they made. Um, this isn't to judge anyone in any of their choices, but this mm. is to say, let's help you navigate Smart. what choices you do have. That's right. And let's make sure everybody is safe and happy. Now, I'm, I say this every you're gonna, show. You're going to stick me with something. <laughs> We're almost finished. Wow. So we do have to end. Can you give them one resource that they can, um, sure. can look up in case mm -hmm. they are a pregnant woman or breastfeeding woman? What would be the best place that they can find information? Do you know it is a tried and true? Um, it's called kellymom.com, K-E-L-L-Y. MOM.com, um, very lovely articles on pretty much anything, breastfeeding, getting started, ages and stages, growth spurts, pumping, um, going back to work, um, all the way through weaning, and um, her links are always reputable and well-researched. All of it is very uplifting. Um, you do have to be careful when you're out there online. Um, not every resource is necessarily reputable or gonna keep you on goal or be the best one for your baby. So Thank um, you. watch your ads, ladies. If there's a pop-up for Similac, you're probably not getting good breastfeeding advice. Um, there's uh, a lot of things to navigate as a new mom. Please call in troops, troops if you need them. Thank you so, so much. You're Thank so you, friend. You have to come back Amazing. on the positive side. <gasps> if I am invited, I will come back. <laughs> so. so for Leslie Pree, my friend, lactation consultant, 
Uh, we will see you next time. Thank you.